other conditions that lead to it. Um, the pulmonary artery, any structural problems with that? If we have a stenosis or a narrowed pulmonary artery, this will translate and increase pressure back to the right ventricle. A bad uh, pulmonary artery valve will do the same thing. If that blood cannot get from the right ventricle easily into the lungs, any obstruction is gonna translate back into higher pressures in the RV and create right-sided heart failure. Okay, now we know how you catch uh, right-sided heart failure. What does it look like? Well, let's think about it. Where did that blood come from before it got to the right ventricle? Into the right atrium, back out into the venous system. So now the venous system is starting, starting to back up. As it backs up into the superior vena cava, we're going to have jugular vein distension unusual jugular vein distension. Moving down through the venous system, think about gravity, right? It's a low system side, so you're gonna have edema in the lower legs, a swelling, swelling in the veins, you can develop varicose veins. Thank God veins have valves in them, right? Think about it, low pressure venous side, but there's one way valves inside the veins to help keep that blood moving forward. Uh, if we didn't have that, everyone would be pear-shaped, if you think about it. If uh, the venous distension is in the gut, the patient can develop ascites, uh, this distension of the abdomen. So when you're thinking about the symptoms of right-sided heart failure, think about where that blood came from before it got to the right ventricle. Everything behind it is starting to back up in line. Okay, this has been just a quick review of the causes and signs of right-sided heart failure. My name is Mark. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.